do. France and Serbia. Well, the last time they played in the Eurobasket competition, it meant medals. Now what it means for Serbia, and I didn't think I'd be saying this, is that they could go to 0-2 and, and be looking at elimination in the group stage. We'll go through that as we see the schedule as these fans prepare and uh, for what should be a classic encounter. Here's the schedule where Latvia get the win earlier on. Belgium win in overtime. Slovenia get their first ever win in a Eurobasket finals. And because of that, that puts Greece and Slovenia on a one-on-one -on -one record. And this makes this tie intriguing. If Serbia lose, they're 0-2. And nothing short of a win over Slovenia will give them the chance to get through. And even that may not be enough. If France beat them, ramifications for Serbia going forward as the defending champions, it will be backs to the wall time. They've got to get this one out of the way. They can make life so much easier for themselves and get the win. And that would make this group, every team one on one. And that means the games after the rest day which is tomorrow, could just de do or die wins, and then a complicated calculation for who would be third. Just about to get into individual player introductions with me, Teresa Brandlova, the former Czech international. Teresa, I don't even want to predict games anymore because uh, Belgium get their first win over Russia. Slovenia get their first ever win. Greece get their first win over Serbia, and so where does it stop? Where does it start? It's a tournament at first. Such a thousand of the great basketball here in Prague. Uh, today's again, you know, I'm excited to see, and I'm, it's going to be interesting to see if both teams are going to find their rhythm, because so far I don't think they have found their rhythm in this tournament. Well, the Serbia lineup, the question straight away, does Sonja Petrovic play or does Sonja Petrovic not play? She didn't play a moment yesterday. And Adabovic has had injuries in preparation, but she's always happy, she's always smiling. And she is and has been the face and one of the leaders of this Serbian team. The thing that was really noticeable the other day was they just didn't have that enthusiasm. They didn't have that party atmosphere that they've had over the last four years on that journey that took them to a Eurobasket championship and the Olympics in Rio. They were a different group. Can they recapture that? Well, the trouble is they're trying to recapture it against this French lineup, who were poor yesterday, but won. It's going to be such a hard matchup for Serbian team. Uh, they missing Serbian team missing Paige and they roster, and it was quite visible yesterday how much she should be here and take a part. But you know, as you said, uh, France has had that fantastic game yesterday, and hopefully we'll see better performance today. Well, we're going to get the national anthems of both teams in a moment. And then we'll talk more about which a game that could see Serbia with their backs firmly against the wall. Now we have the national anthems and we'll start with Serbia. the national anthem of France.
Well, exchange of uh, gifts at the uh, halfway line once France have finished in their huddle and uh, Celine Dumerc is finishing the Let's Go Do It guys. And they're making Serbia wait. And these players will know each other so well because they obviously play in some of the best clubs in Europe. They know each other so well because they've played each other so often. Here are the three officials uh, from Denmark, as uh, Maya Fosberg, Uslem Yulman, and Andre Schaprapa from uh, Belarus. You're going to get a look at his roster, and it's, it's more about the names that are missing that worry me for Serbia. No Daniel Page, there's some changes, but it's Stavovic has retired from international basketball. They've got some young talent on the inside that really was exposed yesterday. And this roster, it just needs Sonja Petrovic to be on the floor. Anna Dabovic also injured in reparation, and uh, Stevan uh, Kalinic. He's got his work cut out trying to turn this around against a French team that won yesterday. There's the starting lineup, and there's the quickest answer you ever need. Does Petrovic play? Yes, she does. She starts at the small forward, and uh, Tina Jovanovic could establish herself as the, the fifth starter, but they really do need a performance out of every single body in a red shirt. Such important element that Sonia Petrovic is going to take part in this game, you know, mental advantage for them, mental, not really advantage, but also like the calmness bring to the team. There's the roster for France. Uh, Siak started really well yesterday, currently won the EuroLeague with Kursk in Russia. In the common consensus, there's the starting lineup, the uh, same lineup that started uh, yesterday. Well, the French media and a number of uh, Various experts say just they take the reins off, just let these guys play, and they've got talent. It's not quite the French way. Celine Demert pulls the strings and orchestrates. There's so much talent in this team, it's getting the balance between control and letting them, letting them loose. Interesting to see how they place this. If they put Serbia in a situation of 0 2, they could remove one of the biggest obstacles they have to a medal because as poor as Serbia were yesterday, you know they're going to get better. You know that they're not going to give up. Well, there's the two players. What do you think? Celine Dumerk and Adabovic. Two players at the point guard that run their team. Yeah, it's a great matchup for, uh, for the people to see, you know. Um, Dabovic hasn't had no assist yesterday in the game. I don't know if she's been injured or not, but she hasn't definitely performed in her best ability. Selim Dimerk, she's a stable part of the French team. She's almost a legend. Uh, she's a sign of the French team, you know. She likes tight games. She's such an experienced player. I think we will see her way more today being involved in the shooting contribution as well. Well, the situation quite easy for France. If they win this, they go 2-0, they're top of the group. And uh, in a very, very strong position to at least be in a qualification game for the quarterfinals. If they win, they put themselves in a great position to play a game less and go straight into the quarterfinals. Interesting to see how Serbia decides to try and guard Siak on the inside. She was dominant at the beginning of the game yesterday. Serbia struggled to stop Spanu for Greece. But Sonja Petrovic wasn't on the floor. Petrovic and Milan Vanovic at the three and the four. With Davovic at the one. And uh, don't underestimate Nevana Jovanovic because she had a poor day from the field yesterday, but she can just light it up. All the component parts are there for Serbia. It's just whether the sum of those parts is good enough. Uh, well, wherever you're watching us, welcome to Prague, France, Serbia. Two of the biggest names in women's European basketball. Serbia in red, France in the white uniform. Last game of day two, and Celine Dumas will get a look in the half court first time up. Guarded by Jovanovic. Nyong just ghosts away to the glass and just misses an easy layup. 
Well, it's a good sign for France they got to the ring. A bad sign for Shen Yong that she just blew the layup. Petrovic getting involved straight away. Stops, fires up the two, count it. Well, if you want to know what they were missing yesterday, you just saw. Miam goes inside. Easy two for Siak. And quite simply, Jovanovic on the inside just has to do a better job of being physical. Yeah, they need to play physical on her. It's obviously one of the highest in this tournament. And just to box her out, it's not enough. You have to push away from the rim as well. Dabovic needs an option. And Sarah Michelle got pulled up with the arm. It's, if there is contact of that nature, it's going to be a foul. I, I, I don't really understand players' view on this. There's Dabovic who turns in, and there's the arm of Michelle. And Dabovic is trying to move it away, but keep your arm out. The referee will always favor the offensive player in that situation. Jovanovic tries to attack it, steps through. Second step is no good, gets her own rebound, but loses control. And Jovanovic, the Tina Jovanovic, couldn't keep it alive. This inside problem that Serbia had, it's, it's, it's going to be an issue, yeah? Um, definitely. You know, Serbia has now some high on the wing in terms of Petrovic, but that inside seems to be a big, big issue yesterday for Serbia, and we can expect that today as well. Well, they've looked twice at the inside, France. Siak scores, and Jovanovic picks up the first foul. Michelle's going to sit down after picking up the foul. And I just think that uh, Marianne, Marianne Johannes is one of the talents of this tournament. You just love offensive players who just want to play. She'll always challenge it. Dumerk out top. Out of chai, Garden her. Got a whistle on the play. France go inside, Serbia foul. At the moment, France plays very really smart, you know, they know where is their advantage. They need to play it down inside the pane, and that's where they focusing on their offense at the moment. Well, Sarah Kunic comes in, so she didn't play at all the a game against Greece. She's a little bit more physical, has more presence. So it's going to be a little bit more pressure to go against for Helena Sia. Mia makes the first. She goes two for two from the line. And France have had a pleasant start. I think I described that, just pounding it inside, taking it to the ring. And they've had a chance. You know, Vanovic, feet set for three, buries it. Well, she was great against Greece. She was the only great contributor that Serbia had. And I think her and Petrovic are just going to have to play out of their skins to get Serbia over the line. Johannes off the cut, puts it on the floor. Oh, great rotation. You know, Vanovic again. Just a little quicker. Milovic gets it. Milovic squares up. Doesn't get the drop. No red shirt went to the glass. And Young will bring it. Johannes has not given me a look in the low post. Well, they're going to find out if Sonia Petrovic is in good shape. There's your answer. You're going to go at me, I'm going to block that. Don't come and bring weak things in here. They get dealt with. Out of chai. Backs out. Skips it. Jovanovic for three is off. And Dumerk gets involved on the glass and the ball will belong to Serbia. And Damovic is receiving treatment on that uh, Serbian bench. We're going to have to keep our eye on it because without Damovic, the task gets tougher. She's been hurt in preparation, hasn't played a lot. Jovanovic gets the ladder chai. Long two is off. Dumerk, chance to push, and he's at the races. Numbers down the floor. They tried to foul her. Dumerk in the lane, blows the little jumper, and Petrovic comes up with another positive stat. Petrovic is spending a lot of time with the ball. Milevanovic steps back, is off. Siak will hand it off to Dumerk. Young. Sen Young will look at it, besides she doesn't like the options. 
Just put a oh, great read. You never know if it's back to back steals. And France being predictable. We never know it's really easy too. And this French team just doesn't look like it has energy. You never know which to the basket for two. Credit to Milanovic. There was a great lead two times in the row in the defense. You know, she knows that they're going to try to pass the ball down to the paint. Great, great position. Milanovic boxes out. Milanovic brings. Petrovic looks inside. Grinich has it. Gonna spend too much time. Surely he's got to get out. Petrovic wants to play pick and roll. Gets her feet set for three. Oh! When you're good, you're always good. It doesn't matter what you're carrying as an injury. How long she can survive is going to be a question. But class is permanent. France again in walk down mode. Turnover. Ranachai gives it up. Kunich with a layup. Gets the two. We've got a 12 to 4 start. Garnier takes the timeout. And this French team walk to the timeout. Do not look motivated. Do not look like they're engaged. A big loss here could be absolutely devastating to their chances of progressing. Petrovic, Milovanovic, five apiece out of the 12. Absolutely brilliant start. That's been such an impressive start. Different team we see today. Serbia. I think that's really the presence of Petrovanovic just makes so much difference. And at this very moment, her and Milovanovic are leading the team. Who else supposed to take that responsibility than them too? Well, Radicai is going to have to play extended minutes if uh, Davovic is, uh, is not coming back. If she's not coming back. Kronic gives them a much more bigger physical presence. France, for all their athleticism, for all their quality, their length, their speed, playing no defense, no transition defense, no one getting out on Milovanovic. And they're going to go even a little quicker. Petrovic is going to sit. The issue they're going to have, obviously, is managing what she does. It's probably one of the, depending on the injury, might not need, might not be able to stay out for too long in case it tightens up. Dumer will advance it into the half court, halfway through the first period. Johannes, baseline penetration, wraps it. Dumer finds the ball as opposed to gets the pass. And we got a reaching foul. It was such a luck that Dumer was in that position. I don't think Johannes wanted to pass to her. Again, it just shows that they're not on the same page at the moment. Well, for a team that prides itself, if that's the right word, prides itself on half-court execution, breaking the game down into chunks, technically executing. The one thing they're not doing at the moment is technically executing. And they're not breaking this game down. Puma puts it on the floor, goes upstairs to Siak. He blows the two-footer. She's just got to finish those plays. Mian will get it to Johannes. Dumert calls it. Johannes goes pick and roll with Siak, who rolls to the hoop. And she is fouled. And Kunic has got to just leave her and recover back. Well, she didn't have enough time. That wasn't really good hatch because she didn't force Johannes to change the direction. You know, she just followed her. You have to make the decision. Either step up a little bit higher or just recover to give a space to your teammate to get back to the position. If Pupa joins the game, that could break the game open if they let a Pupa loose so quick. If you think Johannes are exciting to say the least, Johannes nowhere to go. Oh, just comes up and saves it. CX got to put it up, double dribble, does the way of it, hits nothing, that's a violation. You know, Epupa is that type of player. If she's going to put the pressure on the ball, she's able to force the Serbian team to do some mistakes and bring that energy level high for the French team. Well, Marielle Amont will join the game. So Coach Garnier looking for a combination that will function. Four French turnovers. Serbia had zero. Such an un-French-like performance at the moment. Milovanovic goes to work and is fouled. Mian, just stay in stance. Move your feet. There's no way Milovanovic is going to be able to beat you for speed. Just stay in stance. 
So we never know if it's just contact. That's what we see quite often in this tournament. That, um, the defensive players just stay in you know, contact with the offensive players. They need to do that little step back, you know, to be ready for the penetration. So Valo joins the lineup for France, and the, the, the search for a lineup continues. Amon comes up with a steal, Pupa gives it up. Johannes, what a sight in full court. Off the glass, gets the drop. Exciting with a capital E. The Pupa with that foot speed, just pressuring. Well, Prince takes a chance here for Apuba to run. France with a little bit of momentum now, got to keep pushing. Apuba with a second step. Ina Vanovic has got a stat on every box at the moment, and they're all positive. That's the difference at the moment between Apuba and Salin Dimas, you know, those experiences. Ina Vanovic with a pull up. Well, when your back is against the wall, you have to make a statement early in Serbia with a 14 to 6 advantage. And Minevanovic in particular going to seven personal is doing that. Amor settles for the jump shot. More on the glass, needs somewhere to go. And the ball will belong to France. Again, I don't think they have chosen the best decision in this offense. You could see him um, right down under the rim, posting up, having her defense on her back. And they have chosen to do the mid-range shot instead of get that easy layup done. Sassicato checks in. So both teams ring in the changes. Johannes likes any opportunity to play. Stops, fires it up. And she's a little bit like one or two other players in this competition. You have to give her that freedom, otherwise there is no point in playing her. Mirovinovic keeps it. Attacks it, stops, pops, is long this time. Offensive rebound by Kado. This is more like Serbia, more activity. Oh, almost a double dribble. Mina Vanovic from deep. Great box out. A a Cooper has a chance to run. Gives it up. Johannes in transition. Stops, fires up the three. Count it. That's that freedom you just mentioned. The possession before this one. You have to let players like Johannes give them their head. If they keep missing shots, don't pick them, don't play them. There's no point trying to make her play half-court basketball. You never know which off-shot is in serious conversation with the official. And Sonja Petrovic is the first player to wait for it. As you can see, back a shot coming in. But it's a great start for Serbia because they're just active. France, I, I don't know what they're running. I don't think they've set a word for our screen so far. Yeah, and they know they are fully aware of that they are uh, fighting for the presence in the tournament. No, they're trying to challenge France really well with their quickness, athleticism, and, and France just can't find a way to, to cope with it at the moment. The only player who's active is Johannes, but how long she can carry the team by herself. Well, Johannes will think and believe that she can carry any team for as long as she wants. And that's her mentality. She's got a scorer's mentality. But you have to stop her. In, a, in some systems, she would be amazing. It's, she just opens the floor out. She's quick. Here, this is just, I'm going up. If you don't get in my way, I'm going to finish. Now, she may make some mistakes because that's that type of player. But, uh, and she sits. So uh, France have a very, very uh, different look on the floor at the moment. Sarah Michelle in the back court with a pupa. And Mont is on the floor. Chetero is on the floor. And Amor is on the floor. And there's not a lot of, uh, there's no medals out. There's no senior, not many senior medals on the floor at the moment. And it moves it on. You know, Vanel, we put it on the floor. Great hands. A pooper is quick. She'll pick your pocket. A pooper goes to the glass. There's offensive foul called. Twist. Wow. I'm not seeing that. I didn't see a turn and get position until a pooper hit her. But what do I know? That's why I have a microphone, not a whistle. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I never get into trouble. <laughs> can never affect the game from here. 
Radichai, guarded by Epupa. You never know, but she has space to attack closeouts. Are they not going to guard her? Soft roll, doesn't get the drop. Kunis comes up with the offensive rebound. Great effort. More physicality. Brings physicality off the bench. Yeah, she's doing so far very impressive, like on both ends of the court. Oh, yeah, he's going to come in for more than... I think we're in that place again where everybody except for uh, Skrela has already seen the floor for France. And back to Krunic, I think that's the missing element from yesterday, you know. We haven't seen any contribution for any other big player of Serbia and she's doing a pretty decent job today. Kato's off with a three. AAE to the far side of the ring, blows the layup. Great effort to get back in the play, that's much better by Serbia. They're all five run. And a chai. In transition, Milanovic with the three is off. And we got a whistle on the glass. Call is on IA. Milanovic is taking, taking loads of responsibility at the moment. And um, I think Kado and Sabendakic from the wings, they need to start to be a little bit more active to support Milovanovic in the offense. Well, coming into this tournament, if you said these 10 players would be on the floor together in the first quarter, I'm not, I, I would be shocked as an understatement. No Dabovic, no Petrovic, no Milanovic. Radichai is the only real, is the player that's been more established than anybody else. pedo has been here before. Apoop has only been to the last tournament or so, young player coming out of the French development program. Chadalou, only 19. And Pupa on the floor where she's very dangerous. Guarded by Radichai. Zara Michelle, great pass. Chadalou's got to make this, goes up, soft touch. And France are hanging in. They've gone to a, a, a really different look. And at the moment, it's... Coming up with dividends, and Pupa gets blown by. Radichai kicks. Radichai gets it back. Ten on the possession. Great and Pupa's down. No, she's just quick. If you don't seal her off, she'll come round and take anything. She'll pick any pocket you have. 57 seconds to go in the first. And Pupa will take the walk to shoot the throws. His courage was asking for that ball in the post-up position. But she couldn't hold Epupa on her back, you know. As athletic she is, she was able to go around her and steal that ball. Well, they're going to try and post uh, Epupa up regardless. And Kado and any other guard has to play like a guard, has to play like a big if they're going to do that. Epupa doesn't make the second. And the comes up with the offensive rebound. And Aie will just about secure it. Nine on the possession. Yeah, you run it three. She's going to have to put this up. Throws up a prayer. Oh! What a shot. Well, this, not only is it weekend opening, but it's late opening for the bank. Jeez. And a chai. Stops. Fires to two. She's so good at that. Great offensive rebound. And then another miss from two feet. Quinnage goes up strong. Physical. And one. And one. That's exactly where I was speaking about. Skrinic is such an element this game so far. Offensively, defensively. She just stepped up, you know? Well, there was no message about her being injured. It was just the coach's decision on a DNP yesterday. Well, a chance to make this a two-point game for and as poor as France have looked. Coach Garnier has looked for different combinations and has now has found one that has given them an opportunity to get back in here. Ian's going to come in for the last 18 seconds. I'm always going to sit. Jovanovic will step back in. And Krinic, big impact. Every single player on that bench welcomes her back. They know how, what an impact she's just had. Et Pupa will try and get the last offense started for France. Sarah Michelle to the corner. Mian wide open, feet set, way short. Jovanovic comes down with a rebound. And that should do it. I don't think they're going to make that. And that'll be it for a quarter. 19 to 15. Serbia exploded out of the blocks, got the early lead. France have clawed their way back in. 
with different combinations, different looks. But all that matters is we've got a four-point game after the first quarter. Apart from a couple of threes where they've only, they haven't missed from the three-point line, nothing to write home about, home about for anybody. 38 and 21 percent. Well, by hook or by crook, we've found ourselves with Serbia and France involved in a tough one and a 19-15 margin. Petrovic was automatic from the outset, having an impact. Who knows how many minutes she's going to play. She already has the five points off of the two shots she took. But France were just horrible for the start of the game. No passion, no execution. They look like Serbia, but it's going to roll over. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with France at the moment, but they don't seem to be all players on the same page, you know. They're just stepping into each other's way. Um, they're not sure where the player's going to be. It's quite strange to see from a French team to play like this and perform at this tournament. They haven't found their way yet. Well, Dabovic must have a problem. Obviously, that is clear. Maybe they started just to see how she would do, but uh, obviously she stepped out. Radicai has been good coming in. Petrovic will start the second with Milovanovic. Jovanovic is back and Krinic on the inside. Probably the strongest lineup they can put on the floor at the moment. France back with uh, Dumerk and Michel in the back court. Miguel Ayayi and uh, an impressive Alexia Chalolot. The Borges uh, power forward, 191. Did a nice job in the uh, early minutes that's been given by Coach Garnier. Out of Chai. And Dumas. Nice little matchup. Out of Chai doesn't really get any joy out of that. First time out. Jovanovic stops, pops, doesn't make it. Defensive rebound by Shadow while she keeps putting stats on the floor. Garni is going to leave her in the game, Dumert. This is France again in this uh, half court. This is our tempo. Dumert almost has it stolen. And then they end up with a tough Chalereau jump shot from just inside the three-point line. That's a lot of time to spend to get that. I just suppose what we've said a couple of minutes ago. They're looking for their way to feel comfortable and offensively. Milovanovic. Looks like she's going to kick it. Better try it. Should have shot it. Had her feet set. Takes a tough one on the move. Take the one with your feet set. And Yayi will bring. Attacks it. Far side of the ring. Gets fouled. And Petrovic wasn't able to get anywhere defensively to stop the penetration. Far side of the ring. Always a place to get joy if you can turn the corner. Yayi will be on the free throw line. Yayi <laughs> will, will make and sit down. And France have four of the starters back on the floor. Only shot a roll, did not start. They're back to a two-point game. Mijevanovic. A little quiet since returning. Radicic moves it on to Petrovic. Finic will give it a chance to board. And Dumert just played quick. Petrovic just wanted to go at her. Petrovic thinks she was hit on the way up, but uh, right in front of the official. Demar uh, just used the advantage that she's smaller, quicker than Petrovic. She knew that if she's going to stay close, she can't go around her one on one. It was a great defense from Jovan Demar. Dumert in space. Chedolo attacks a closeout. Just about survives with the ball. France, Michelle backs out. Going nowhere and travels. To me, at the moment, the French team will make a first or second pass in their set and then all stand still. And there's no, no one's really making something happen for each other. Exactly, the offense doesn't finish after the first, second pass. We have 24 seconds for offense, and we just have to keep 
continue in your set offense to find that opportunity to shoot. Petrovic for two is fouled. And if the rule is to force to the baseline, there's no help. If the rule isn't to force to the baseline, Shannon Young's just got to, got to get down and contain penetration. If you just got it, there's no real reason that Petrovic should be able to take her off the dribble. Sara Michelle sits. That's been the difference compared to the another attack what um, Sonia Petrovic has done. You know, Dimark is quick on her feet. She was able to just close her way to the rim, but at this very moment, Sonia Petrovic used her advantage um, because she knew that her defender is way taller and slower on her feet. Well, uh, Shannon Young is just, just be better though. If she's that much, she is quick enough to guard Petrovic. Just, I don't know why she gave up the baseline in so, it's such an easy way unless it's the rule to force it there. But then then have to be a weak side help for sure. Yeah, if that's the rule, that's where it should be. Exactly. But disjointed is an understatement. Shannon Young attacks the baseline. Just flies past Petrovic. And there's a reaching foul on Radichai. Well, that's the difference, isn't it? She went baseline, Quinnich came to help, but she just flew past Petrovic. But Petrovic forces her there, knows she's going to get help. And in the end, they're fortunate France. They, they scrap, they scramble, and they get the foul. Radichai is going to sit. Replaced by uh, Sonia Mandic. Humor. Dumerk finds Liam at top. Dumerk gets it back, five. Dumerk settles for the three, doesn't get the drop, and Petrovic just boxes out and brings it. Petrovic on the dribble. Now it can go at Siak, nice pass to Krunic. He's got to finish the play. The Achilles heel for Serbia in this tournament at the moment. They just can't get production out of the inside. Offensive foul. Lack of execution again for France. And see, I can shake her head, but here she comes down the lane. Yep, walked into the player, didn't set the screen. Exactly. Again, we've seen hands on the player. You know that the referee is calling these as a foul. Um, we would assume that Siak has already learned from yesterday's game, but she can't find her rhythm either down under the rim. Well, France, with the exception of Johannes, I've got the players who didn't look like they had rhythm at the beginning of the game. Petrovic, Sachs can, not going to switch to Chen Yong, is just more athletic. They go, they go big ball screen. Petrovic needs a pass. And they're going to go Chen Yong for the foul. Let's take a look. See, there's the foul. She reached forward, it's when Petrovic went underneath her arm, it's a foul. Yeah, you can't put your hands down on the player again. Um, if she would have kept them high, then that would be questionable, but it was definitely a foul from yeah. Jojo. Moles will come into the game. Novinovic puts it on the floor left, gets to the ring, doesn't get the roll. The ball will belong to Serbia. One of those rules that people teach you when you, you are a young player is don't let the ball go out of bounds because who knows how the referee is going to call it. Just grab it. And France at the moment, just so many little mistakes and Dumerck's going to be called for a, a reaching foul. And again, okay. You might be confused day one, day two. Are you confused still? I think it's just the frustration from French team because they know they're not performing in their abilities at the moment. Um. Petrovic, more defense now. Milovanovic with so much time though. And Dumert comes down with it. No action on the inside at all again for Serbia on the glass. Dumert looks to turn the corner and does, needs a pass. Mia mid range, her range, drops it. Drops it for two. Her range, her shot. Dumert, for years they've played in, the, in those roles, knocks down the two. You know, it's lifts to Mia Menovic. 
Gets the switch, looks to attack off the dribble. Foul on Siak, great recognition. That was a great read from Milovanovic. She's seen that she has the tallest player, almost the tallest in the tournament on her. She's quick enough on her feet to penetrate, to fake shot her and just go under her arms. Two-point game, 6.04 to go in the half. Milovanovic on the free throw line. I kind of feel there's loads of penetration opportunities for Serbian team and no help from French team, you know. They just leave it to one-on-one -on -one defense, which is not the best, but then you have to rely on your teammates to help you. He's coming in for Siak. They're going to go a little quicker. They don't get enough offensive production out of Siak to warrant the issues they have defensively. Zone trap looks for uh, Serbia. And Johannes uh, travels. It's been a great call. Referees seeing that little step from Johannes. And all too often, referees ignore it. But the defense is up the floor. You've got to reward it. If that causes... That's the time for selling the back to call French team together and have that little talk. It'll be interesting to see this one. Johannes on defense. There you go. Why put your arm in? Just the experiences of Jovanovic demonstrate that she's been fouled, you know. And I have to say, I, while sometimes you worry about the game being caught a little too tight, you've got to clean it up. And I think uh, the referees have just about got it right at the moment. Serbia, the chance to lead by five with six to go in the half. Fans have to stop worrying about the officials. They're not here to make the officials better. They're here to win. Great trout. Oh, nice pass to Miriam. Goes up for the easy two. But don't worry about the travel. Attack it, move the ball, make the pass. Exactly. That's how Frank Steam needs to play at the moment. Move the ball. Mandic gets it to Petrovic. Yeah, he guards her. Mid range two. Gotta make, do make. They do make. Stankovic gets the two. They need production out of that five spot. It doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't have to be any one player. But they need production. See, I have to say, you've got to protect your Merck in the same way that uh, the players have been protected the other way. A lot of contact. Miam, open jump shot, buries it. Her game, that mid-range game is sweet. Three-point game. Milavanovic goes upstairs to Stankovic. And she is fouled on the way up. Getting a lot of replays of fouls at the moment. And again, we could see the situation when two centers, two big players playing pick and roll between each other. Such effective at this moment because no one of it is quick on her feet. And Stankovic just could have rolled down as she did and received that pass. Well, Stankovic, 195, still only 22. Still got some filling out to do almost. Second one is good. Four-point lead for Serbia. And you can see that pressing defense from Serbia to slow down France. Get them out of their rhythm. Johannes Dumerk swings the baseline. Mian gets it mid-range. Got to make a put in on the floor. Dumerk for three. Doesn't get the roll. Miam gets it back to Dumerk. He tries to open the floor. Miam, great, great, great pass. Because there was no, no lane at all to make it. Somehow she manufactured it. And Miam did a great job to, con to contain it. The three is no good. Defensive rebound. Chance for Dumerk to run again. France with some ribbon down the floor. Got to keep pushing. And then they quite rightly call it unsportsmanlike. I just hate that foul where they just say, I'm going to take one for the team. No genuine attempt to play the ball. But they have to be consistent because it's been, it hasn't been called for most of the day today. Exactly, exactly. Radicar checks in, Petrovic sits. 
it's going to be a little bit of a guessing game with Petrovic in terms of how much she can play, how, sh how good a shape is she in. Johannes sits, Dumert is on the free throw line. So far, Serbia is recovering well in defense to protect the um, fast break of friend, but such a great read from Selin de Merck now to see that they haven't been setting up any defense so far, so she just tried to attack that first wave of that defensive De Merck is going to sit with 4.11 to go in the half with Poopers coming in. France have tied it at 27 and they have possession. The Poopa with the basketball, guided by Alan Chai. Both of these are quick. Gungana mm. Skrela also checks in. So it's all 12 players for France have seen action within the first 16 minutes. That was a no reasonable reach from Stankovic. She's going to struggle to get this in, just about beats the count. A Pupa underneath, inside, outside, Skrela. She has to shoot this shot, that's her strong side. Chance here, the Milanovic will go up, A Pupa gets back, gets a piece of it. And that's how you outwork your opponent. Skoris gets down the floor. Bell Skrela's not going to take an open three. She's not, she's not on this team. Exactly, she double guessed herself. And the Serbian bench have been charged with the personal. And I quite, quite rightly, there's inconsistency again because the French bench has been up just as much. Sometimes officials create a little bit of rod for their own back, don't they? If there's inconsistency, the French bench is up, no technical, the Serbian bench is up, technical. I completely agree, Mark, you know. It must be readable for players the way they need to play, you know. Well, the net effect is we've got a 28-29 game. Shadow Roll comes back in with some, did some nice things in that first spell. France again go to an interesting lineup. A pooper. Strella is fouled, not called. Ayayi puts it on the floor, goes strong, step back, long two, is off, great rebound. Oh, he's just athlete on athlete. Just tremendous elevation to get the rebound. Ayayi steps back for a huge three, way off. And a child. Will bring it, now brings it out. Three minutes to go in the half. Branichai shows a handle. Skolic goes inside. Stankovic inside out. Milovanovic on a catch and release is no good. And she started so, so sweetly, Milovanovic. I'm sure she's going to find her rhythm back in the game, you know. Ipupa will move it on. Skrela needs to start to be a little bit dangerous, you know. Well, she needs to move into space. We've got a Skrela wide open, long two. Can't get it to drop. Another rebound by Mel. We'll get it out to Ayayi and France are using this 3-4 ball handler a lot. Skrela with a catch and release for two. And Serbia will take the timeout. France have their first lead in the game. Timeout Serbia. The French are up. The LA Le Beau champ is ringing around the arena. And this is where for all their emotion at the beginning of the game, Serbia have to be the Serbia of the last four years of Belize. Well, my servo crow is not really up to much, but uh, it looks like they want to go inside into the low post, inside out. Someone else has got to start taking some, some shots out of what they're running. So at the moment, Milevanovic is the only player that really looks aggressive in her, in her actions. Yeah, I think um, I like the, you know, Kronic on the court because she had such a big, big contribution. And I think we will see her on the court, hopefully, very soon again. 
because she was the player stepping up for Milovanovic as well to take that responsibility for the shot for the great defensive uh, situation you know you're right you're right there's no one else who's now willing to shoot to take the shot that responsibility well especially early in the offense if you're going to run things to get particular options then if that's your turn you've got to step up and shoot it but the same for France Skrela makes the two she should be looking to do that every opportunity she has because that's why she's wearing a white vest. Radichai takes the ball screen. Doesn't look to shoot the ball and they go underneath. Radichai's a great shooter. They go inside as asked. They blow it on the shot. Great rebound by Scottish. She's really bringing in a bucket load of energy. Mina Vanovic will find no one. Has it herself. Three. She's got to put it up. Takes the runner, hits nothing, Epupa gets in and runs. Just run. Chance to run in transition, set in the half court. It's 30 to 29, 138 to go. Yeah, he will get the ball screen. Steps back for three. Way off. Great work on the glass though. And Ian Mia just meant just all over the glass. Oh, Skrella wide open, and uh, a pooper because she's looking to run offense, just missed her. And they get a 24-second violation when they had a layup beckoning. Exactly, and Serbian team needs to start again boxing out their players, you know. That's been a second position in a row that, you know, if you give a France two options to score, they will take one. Um, even though their offense is not as it's supposed to be, they miss that wide open look down on the rim. Um, Radichai off the ball screen, gets to the foul line, has to back out. She's not coming off that screen looking to be a threat. She's coming off that screen to pass. It's not that she doesn't have that space, she does. Oh, I mean, Elvis just get pinned on the backboard. Gets it back, This is the tough turnaround, and France come down with it. And that's the sort of French defense they're capable of, just intimidation. Iyagi puts it on the floor, attacks it this time, wraps the pass. Got to roll for two. Transition basketball, move it, attack it. Do not have to get into the half court game, and all of a sudden, French open out a three point lead. And Gal Skrella commits a foul and takes all the energy out of the gym. I think the French team has heard us, and they need to do that extra passes, you know. That's the way we want them to play, that's the way we want them to move the ball. That was an amazing look from Ayai all the way down to the corner to hit that open player. Ivanovic is good from the free throw line. She's good from the floor. She's flat out a great shooter. At the moment though, she's not getting shots. Goes two for two from the line. Last 30 seconds of this first half. France have the one point lead. Interesting to see what Serbia come up with. Neither team have any fouls to give, so no one's going to want to send their opponent to the free throw line. I'd like to point out earlier when you said that Radochai doesn't really look for her opportunity to shoot. You know, if she does it, if she's going to make one shot, it's going to change completely the defense of French team who are now dropping down to cover Milovanovic and any big player of the Serbian team. You know, she needs to start to take that shot even if she doesn't feel as confident. Um, I'm sure that they're going to point it up in that timeout because at the moment all we see is just dribbling the ball and forcing through the middle. They need to spread out the floor and move the ball side to side, you know, to make a French to move a little bit in defense. Well, I've run try, as you say, in the, in the last uh, four years of you know, Serbian basketball, women's basketball, just going through the scene has been such an impact player coming off the bench because she will be a threat. Defensively, she's quick. At the moment, she's almost trying to play to not make mistakes. And this team need her to get going because Milena Benovic is not going to score enough for this Serbian team to just ride her all the way to a win. The inside isn't going to get enough options. They're just going to have to contribute. So Ratatai is one of those experienced players in that red uniform that's got to believe they can score. Here's their pupa after the timeout last 20 seconds there's around a six five seconds differential we've got a foul on the plate and what will we say about not wanting a foul and send your opponent to the line when you go trapped like this you know you just want to keep your hands up 
to use that moment of a surprise for the third player to go for that ball to steal it, but you don't want to reach. You don't want to reach in this moment of the game when you are in a foul trouble. And as you know, AI is going to miss the throws, which uh, she manages to oblige, so therefore it becomes a reasonable foul as long as uh, Serbia convert going the other way, but there's no way that uh, Skoric do that, and AI makes a second. And Radicai will bring what you wouldn't give if you're Serbian fans for Radicai to come off a screen here and score. She's going to get that high screen. Sets her pooper up. And the pooper's so quick. Super defense. Great play by Radicai. Then shoot the ball. Gives it to Milovanovic. Buries him. Buries the three. Gives Serbia the lead at the half. I think. That's the three into the changing room. That's the mental advantage for Serbian team at the moment. And uh, Pupa's defense gets exposed. Milovanovic is way outside the three. Buries it. And you've got to ask why France were collapsing away from Milovanovic. And that's exactly the question that Coach Garnier is just asking herself. Yeah, and Frenchie knew that, but, uh, that the point guard, Radicai, won't take that shot. So why are they collapsing from the player who's taking the post shots at this tournament from, for Serbian team? So we've reached the half, 34 to 33. And Serbia coming back off the loss for Greece. Their backs are to the wall. It's not been the prettiest of basketball games. It's been intense, though. And both teams have overcome some indifferent periods. And now we've got a game, 34 to 33. 10 turnovers for France. I don't know where that number comes from. It's not a number you're used to seeing when France national, when the French national team steps onto the floor. It's been, uh, is that Serbian defense or is that lack of execution by France? I really think it's more the French are in control of that. Well, Johannes was an impact off the bench. A Pupa really did spell Dumark very, very well. And Chedereur looked almost the most effective five they have on the floor because Siak just can't finish place at the moment and struggle defensively. And this was the prayer. The prayer was answered. You could see even on her expression face that she's like, okay, let me just throw that ball, you oh, know. Right on the end of the shot clock, gets the roll. So we'll leave you with uh, these highlights as Mia makes the baseline jump show. And Mia got herself going to end up uh, leading all scorers with 11. So Serbia do not want to be 0-2. France would love them to be 0-2. If you want to find out who Gets the result they want. Join us for the second half in around uh, 10 minutes or so to see if France can overturn a one-point deficit and go 2-0 in the group. We'll see you in 10.
Well, welcome back inside the Kolovka Arena here in Prague. It's half time of the last game of day two of Eurobasket Women 2017. And Serbia have responded so well to the adversity of the loss yesterday to Greece, the injuries to uh, Sonja Petrolic and Anna Dabovic. And Dabovic started the game, didn't play more than a minute, and then had to sit. Petrovic has played a couple of periods of four or five minutes at the start of the game. She was great. Open shot, nice penetration, and uh, coming back in the second quarter, looked like she's carrying an injury. Yeah, that's the question, like how much she's able to play in the second half. She's definitely a big, big element in the Serbian game, and we could see it in the beginning of the game, as you just said. You know, so far she's been playing five minutes per each quarter, so I think we might well see the same amount of time from her. But Another player needs to step up. As we said, Radojic needs to start to look for her shot as well, to, to attach the defense from French, to, to lift them up a little bit, to give the space down under the rim for the bigger players of the Serbian team. We talked about during the game that the five spot, whoever's in it, because they're going to have to share it between uh, Kunic and uh, Stankovic and uh, Tina. Uh, Jovanovic, those three are going to have to share it. At the moment, they're like three from five. We're going to take five, six shots, sorry, in that five spot. They haven't really rebounded between them that much. Grinch has uh, managed to contribute four boards. Stankovic hasn't got a board. Jovanovic uh, has two, so, you know, it's, it's just not enough contribution from that spot. Yeah, it would, it would be also good to see Jovanovic to, to spread out the floor and, and, you know, get some open shots from the side of the court, you know. All the offense at the moment goes through the middle um, from Serbia. Well, a combination of the fives needs to contribute. Jovanovic, Jovanovic the, the two guards, who's played a lot of time, she has to start knocking down some shots too. And Radichai needs to be a threat. He's coming off that slow screen. They're running screens just to get her the chance to pass. He's got to be a threat. And in past national team tournaments, Radichai has been so effective coming off the bench. But in saying all that and how much problems they're having, they're winning by one against a French team that I don't know. And and I'll just leave it like that. A French team, I don't know. I don't know what, what to expect. Johannes has been great when she's been on the floor. Liam has been great when she gets her feet set. Pumert looks out of rhythm in terms of scoring. And normally that will get better as the competition goes on. But the French trying to do a bit of Iceland here in the crowd. The, the single claps. And they're going to need something to get on the same page. Because, in fact, this is great. The Serbian fans are joining in too. One of the great things about our game is the fact that fans just coexist and just love the atmosphere. So France will have possession of the basketball. Sarah Michelle will inbound. Changes in the lineup. Well, one change in the lineup. Mont is started. She has it, guarded by Petrovic. It could be an interesting ask for Sonia Petrovic if she's injured. Dumerk. Comes off the screen, but comes off the screen to pass, and we've got an offensive foul. I wouldn't mind seeing it again because Celine Dumerk's reaction is a little bit. Well, you know what? 
Mizzicato took position. And Siak just ran through her. That's a foul. You know, you can't just run through someone. Exactly. That was a smart move from Kato, you know. Um, she knew that Siak's going to create her position by her hand. Right a try. Shoot the ball. They've got to say, everyone's shooting. Everything, the Serbian crowd is saying, shoot the ball. Right a try. Looks to me, Evan Olbertson missed her. And that takes a tough runner. Take the open shot with your feet set. Dumert in transition. Ian with her feet set. Doesn't have the range on the three. Great work on the glass. We've got a whistle on the play. Well, I suppose players and coaches ask for a little bit of consistency. Well, consistently, both sets of players are unhappy with the call, so it's going both ways. Yeah, but it was another great box out on the glass from Kronich to keep Siak on her back. But unfortunately, we've seen that Sonia Petrovic hasn't boxed out her player, and that's why we see her now taking two free throws. Oh, line, lane violation as uh, Eddie uh, Min is uh, given a second chance for a second three throw, which she gladly accepts, and France took it over to have the one point lead. Without a child. They're running the same sets that they would run with Anna Dabovic. And Anna Dabovic would come off the screens looking to score. So, you know, it's a big ask for Radicai, but she's got to at least be a threat. And there's a holding foul by Mint. Mint. So you run the same set, Anna Dabovic comes off and tries to score. Radicai comes off and tries to pass. And so, and Petrovic is feeling the injury. has it on the wing, looks inside, takes the tough two, and it was all about her arms, she just couldn't really elevate, limps going back, Dumert clears out the lane, goes up off the glass, throws the air ball, Ilevanovic, that's off and short, and that's a rebound, well it's clear that uh, Adia Need to gives uh, gives this team some athleticism. Hasn't been a great start to uh, first quarter for any of the teams at the moment. Not taking the right decisions offensively and defensively. Sarah Michelle with a three way off. You have an Olbic. A Serbian defense at least is trying to play physically here, which is taking France out of what they want to run. France got really going when they had that little, that younger lineup that was much more expansive, wanted to attack the basket. Petrovic moves it to Milovanovic. Kado finds Milovanovic with five on the possession. Tries to go at me and steps through. Throws the tough one up. Another rebound and Dumert. And France got to run. Some tempo to the game. Dumert off the dribble is fouled by Radicai. You're right, Mark. They need to try to run that transition offense. You know, before Serbian teams can set up their defense, they need to change the rhythm of the game at least. You know, they at the moment seem their energy level is so low. You know, they're just taking part in this game. They're not trying to figure it out what to do against this team of Serbia. Do you mean kind to France? It's almost like they're just trying to win. With, with trying to expend as little energy as possible in these early rounds of the tournament. And Kato just kept pushing. That's what you spoke about earlier. You know, Serbian teams try to put the pressure on French team. Okay, it's gonna cause a couple of fouls, but the effect is there. And this, you know, this maybe gives the French team some credit, as in they're trying just to expend as little energy as possible. Dumer needs a pass. Three seconds. Got to put it up. You get a travel. It's just messy. The whole game is messy. Now there's pressure. And the, you can't escape the fact that France will really want to beat Serbia here because that could help eliminate the defending champion. Greenwich comes out top. If one team gets a run on here, it's tough for the other one to respond. Kedo for three. Doesn't get the drop. And the ball belongs to Serbia because, you know, the just knocked it away and Mien didn't didn't pivot, didn't protect it. 
She's got it here. Just if she pivots out, there's no problem. It was great hustle from Milovanovic, even though she kind of kept isolated to go for that rebound, you know. Um, will relieve the pressure of Radichai. Radichai could just get herself going offensively. And there here we go. Off the pull-up jump shot. Radichai has offense. She has in her locker enough tools to be a threat and give Serbia back the lead. Do you think that's the way now she realized she's going to take more shots? Well, you would hope, but we'll see. Turnover, or is it? No, it's not. Come on, mm. just shovels it. France just can't get it up. You Merck for three, way short. Gets her own rebound, though. Amor has it on the inside. Goes out Kunic with a hook. Can't finish the play. And the ball belongs to France. This is one of those games that's just going to be that war of attrition. Serbia are doing enough with their defense to hang in the game. And France want them to open the game, expand the game. Yeah, but we can see they're even dropping, the, the ball's dropping off their hands, you know. We're still away from the ball. And the players, as much as they complain, they are making this game like this. There's a lot of pushing, a lot of holding, and the referees have set the tone. They're going to carry on calling it until they stop. I hope they carry on calling it. Mian, feet set, her game, her result, knocks down the long two. France, go back up by one, yet another lead change. We have another ch will get it off to Radichai. Dumerk drops to the floor for no apparent reason. Radichai steps back, long two, is short this time. But she took it, but only as a last resort. Yeah, there was a little hesitation from Milovanovic. She was just waiting for Radichai. And Milovanovic to gets called for the reach. And Serbia already in the bonus with 5.47 to go. If it carries on like this, there'll be a lot of free throws. Milovanovic will sit. Obviously, this, these two teams are very competitive. They've been in big games against each other. There won't be any quarter asked or given. It's going to be a physical confrontation. So the referees are probably in the right place trying to control it. Tara Michelle. Knocks down the free throw. Goes two for two from the line. She steps out. Johanna steps in. Maybe Johanna and a pooper should just play together. The game would get like twice as quick. Here's Radachai. Petrovic. Cut to get open. Going to hand off. Kato. Petrovic, feet set for three this time, can't get it to go. And they just don't have offense on the floor. They have limited offensive options, Serbia. It's going to have to be one of those games they try and tough out with their defense. Ten seconds before the first pass in the half court, Johannes stops, fires it up. You've got to love her. People pay money to see people like money at Johannes. Instant offense. Out of a little hesitation. Thought she was going to shoot it. Was going to get quite excited because she was going to try and get some offense going. I don't like them. Petrovic settles for the three and knocks it down. Answers Johannes's quick two of a three of her own. I don't know what Amanda was waiting for. It was quite clear that she's just going to stop and shoot, you know, she's going to step back. Yeah, Petrovic is the player that's injured, really going to struggle. Nice seal, easy mm. two. Blew it. And that shows the struggle that France is going through. Well, Mia is literally only scoring on that shot where she just gets her feet set. Dumerk, the game becomes very stretched already. Amor puts it on the floor, is fouled, and they want the travel, they get the travel. Celine Dumerk is going to sit. Timeout, no. I thought it was a timeout for France. They decided not to call it. Chalereau comes into the game. Again, we can see that Sonia Petrovic stepped out exactly after the five minutes of the game. Must be some setup with the member of staff, you know, call me out after five minutes so I can play on the fourth quarter as well. 
Well, Mina Vanovic checks back in. Mina Vanovic may have to go for 30 for uh, Serbia to win this. Puts it on the floor, far side of the ring. Doesn't get the drop, she's out of bounds, so the ball will belong to France. You just like to see Krinic, whoever's at the fire, just crash the boards every single time. Try and keep something alive for her team. Try and perform a role. All the talk about uh, Dakic, you, you want to see Sharon Dakic just start to really look to play. Johannes for three is no good. What a ball by Amor. Johannes has it, will recycle. Yeah, he backs it out. Ekupa going baseline, needs a pass. Amor gets her hands up just in time. Nice cut, nice two. France open it out to their biggest lead of the game. But Kruny Johnson straight away. They were just so happy scoring French team, you know, that they can bleed the fuck out, go back to defense. And they really they just they left Hamon out to drive. You know, she was the one on the glass. And her players down the floor, no one helped her. Chevrolet gives it up to Yannis. Nevanovic will, will switch out. Yannis is going to take this, steps back. Oh, sweet, sweet. When she has it, you know she wants to score. And you know you've got to play defense to stop her. Cato goes up, doesn't get it. And again, no one from Serbia on the big side goes to the glass. Johannes, feeling it, will give it back to her pupa. Five point lead for France. Johannes has the ball in her hands again. That's quite a logical decision. This is going up. Oh, yeah, back no, to no, back no, I rest my case on the quality of Marie Johannes. Back to back three. She just broke this game open on her own. 49 to 41. Here's the first one. Step back. Take that one. Nothing but string. Here's the second. It's the same one. It's the second one. I've done it from the side. I'll do it from the top. I don't know how much offense is in this huddle. What do you think? You've, you've got to try though, haven't you? You can't just play it out. So if you're a big, it's like go in a rebound for me. Every shot is a pass. Exactly. It seems like almost that they're just relying on Milovanovic so much right now. They just think, oh, she's going to score every single shot. You know, she's getting tired as well. She's trying so hard, but you've got to support her. Go for every offensive rebound. That's just effort, you know, to go for offensive rebound. That shows how much heart you have. And at the moment, I think Milovanovic has the biggest heart out of the team. Well, it's, it's going to be an interesting dilemma for Serbia here. How long are they get? They, I just don't see their, they have the depth at the moment or the health to work their way back into this game defensively. They can't let this get out of hand. If it gets into a 12, 14 point game, I don't know how many options they have to get back in the game. They're not grease or slow it down and find ways to score. Because at the moment, the only way they're trying to score is Milovanovic. Ball's handle will belong to Serbia. During Dakic, got to be a threat. Got to be a threat. 2.20 to go in the third. Crucial time here for Serbia. They have to hang in here. Jovanovic, maybe she's going to get going from the perimeter. Krinic is the inbound option. Well, man, this forces the baseline jump shot. Not with a lot of confidence. A poop up in the open floor. Who's going to receive the ball? Jovanovic again. Takes the ball screen, feels the double team, finds the open player. Shot a roll, gets an angle, can't complete. Greenwich comes down with decent rebound. Milanovic has got to run. Serbia's half court offense at the moment is giving them very, very little. Gets a, a horn set. Greenwich is wide open if she could dive. Kieran Dakic on a post up. With help already coming and they still throw it in. Foul court. Endline possession for Serbia. They just have to find a way to hang in. They have to give themselves a fourth quarter chance. Novanovic will find Kunic. Landic outside. Doesn't want to open the floor. Novanovic will get Novanovic. She pops. 
And Pupa recognizes, does a great job chasing it down. And Dakic for three, can't knock it down. They moved the ball, got the option. And the ball will belong to France. That's a, that has been a bright look from Milovanovic, but you know, Sivan Dakic, she kind of almost thought that the ball goes in and she stepped back instead of go for her offensive rebound. Well, after recovering the basketball, Ayayi will be signing autographs, selling hot dogs and kissing babies. She's doing it all. Surely there must be someone in the arena who can get the basketball. I think it's under the whole thing. I'm not expecting her to dive and get it. Someone from the French staff is now underneath the uh, underneath the stands, but they've found another ball. A Pupa will advance the basketball. 1.15 to go in the third. Serbia, no score in over three minutes. Well, in fact, in over seven minutes. Johannes is getting extravagant now. She took that one almost on the Serbian bench. Well, there's no one at the moment who wants to take that responsibility, you know, and shoot the ball. Oh, great vision. Comes up with a steal. Just threw it there to Ayi. He gets the two. If Johannes is involved, good things are happening. French crowd in full song now. A Pupa knocks it out of bounds. 31 seconds in the quarter remaining. Seven on the possession. And I'm not sure. We'll have to check if a defending champion has gone out in the first round of a women of a Eurobasket women. A Pupa has to run, gets fouled, and Dakic takes one for the team. They still had, uh, they had no to give they in the penalty, so a pooper is going to step to the free throw line. It almost seems like Serbia doesn't know what to play at this moment, you know. But Rucha, yeah, she didn't want to take the shot, she, but she was driving that team. She, they knew, you know, they spread out the floor, but now the person who's bringing the ball is Milovanovic. That's not the way you want to play. Uh, Sonja Petrovic checks back into the game. Did a little bit of foot fire and just went. So this is when you put your body on the line for your country. If Cooper makes a second, from the 11 point lead. Serbia just can't find a way to get a, a great look apart from the open three for Sharon Dakic, which she missed. No option on the inside. Petrovic trying to hold for the last shot. There's about a two, three, three, four second differential. Petrovic is fouled on the way to the hoop. A lot of body contact. Needs to tick it over. Get it back to single digits. It's always a better situation if you look at a single digit margin. And Petrovic knocks down the first. Ten point game. On one leg, she's at 11 and 5. On two legs, who knows what she'd have done. Two for two from the line. I think Johannes might take the shot here. Wraps it to a pooper, great decision. Johannes, quick release, is short. And the ball goes out of bounds. And with point four on the clock. Serbia will have to inbound it, at the very least. the back of the Sonja Petrovic free throws. Serbia have managed to get it back to single digits. It's a nine point game. There's such a proud group of players that you know they're gonna go down to their last ounce of energy to try and pull this one out. But those statistics tell you a lot, that's all you need to know. 25% from the two and the three against France is just not gonna be enough.
Well, as well as trying to win this uh, Eurobasket women, the top five teams in this championship plus Spain, and if Spain is in the top five, the top six teams, including Spain, will make it to next year's World Championships, which Spain are the hosts. Check out the uh, FIBA website information about that. That is a tournament, as this one is worth making the trip for. The best players in the, in the world in Spain in 2018 as we get some highlights of one of the most exciting players in Europe at the moment. Johannes is just a flat-out scorer. And Sonja Petrovic is just a warrior. With the injury, feeling the pain, strokes the three. So Serbia go with uh, Jovanovic, Oladicai, Petrovic, Minovanovic, and uh, Tina Jovanovic on the inside. They need a great start. They do not need to close nine points at the, in one go. But halfway through this fourth quarter, they've got to be closer than nine. Jovanovic will bring it in, and Oladicai and Dumert at the point. Petrovic off the screen. Looks to attack it. Courageous, courageous move by Sonia Petrovic. Closes it to seven. She has 14 points. Just a heroic effort. Johannes will come off the down screen. Dumert looks inside. Ian gets a touch. Inside, outside. They're going to have to take the three. And the Serbian defense steps it up. Seven point deficit. Radicai, they've all got to take responsibility here. No. Who's going to play from the Serbian team? Petrovic will hand it off. Minovanovic steps back, feet set. Is long on the three, and Petrovic forlornly tries to recover it. Siak will check back in. I'm all sits. Dumerk, see how it gets a touch. Dumerk. Johannes comes off the screen. That was quite a late call as well from the referee. I, I almost think the referee was so surprised. It was such a travel. It was like two steps before he even put it down. I, I don't think even he could believe it. So Serbia generate another turnover. Give themselves another opportunity to eat into the lead. They trail 7, 52 to 45. Radichai, you just want Radichai to get aggressive. You want Radichai to be a threat. Petrovic comes off the screen, likes this Mian matchup. Goes inside. Nevanovic, this is going up. Is fouled on the hold on the floor. Minovanovic buries no. it for three. Four point game. You've got to take your hat off to the Serbian lineup. Playing like a champion. That's what they are. Johannes. Not a great matchup. Minovanovic will get done for speed here. Foul in the block because Jovanovic had to switch. Jovanovic just either had to foul or expect help. Shows the option to foul. Timeout, France. They take their first timeout of the second half with 8.11 to go in the fourth. They lead by four. And again, France are giving a team, like they did with Slovenia last night, they're giving them a chance to get the win. Exactly. Um, they just don't perform the way. You know, if you would have told me before this tournament that France will struggle so much like we've seen so far, I wouldn't believe you. But credit to Serbia, you know, with Petro, uh, with Petrovic on the court, you can see that wideness of the offense of the Serbia. You know, before it was just rather, rather um, it was just a rather chai with the centers, but with the Petrovic on the court, it gives another angle to attack the basket. You know, I just still want rather chai to be a little bit more aggressive and help Serbian team um, in offense. 
Dina Ivanovic has got such a great stroke. When she gets her feet set, everything's in a straight line. 14 points personal, her and Petrovic with 14 apiece. Going to give Krinic a lot of credit, it's chipped in with nine. So that the combination of whoever's in the five is becoming a, a real help. In line possession with a 14 second set. And Dumert. Again, Johannes goes inside to Nian, he should finish, finds herself in traffic. Celine Dumert for three is oh. short, but she gets the drop. And she needs that, not just for tonight, but for going forward. Petrovic, the middle opens up, she goes down the middle, takes it strong for two. Davidovic sits and applauds. And that's what I was talking about. It's just the penetration from the wing position, which gives completely different angle and different open looks for Serbian team. Dumerk, back to back three, as you find one. They're like London buses. One comes, they come along in a hurry. You can wait forever, and then they all come together. And Dumerk knocks down back to back threes. She needed the ring for the first one. She needed no help on this one. Nothing but strength. France open to eight. Petrovic. Minevanovic just playing together almost. Wants the ball screen. Goes to the far side of the ring and is fouled. And if Siak doesn't get her angle right on that screen, she's got no way of recovering. If she gets her angle correct, she can stop the penetration at source. But she just gets turned a little bit too easily. You never know, but to make it a six point game with 7.14 to go. Two for two. Six point game. And a skin extended minutes. Dumert gets it back. They offer Siak the jump shot. She takes it and gets her own rebound. That's a great effort. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're 160 or 210, you've got to box out. And no one put a body on her. No one got anywhere near to putting a body on her. Great effort. Sonia Petrovic picks up foul number three. It's got to stand still in the free throw. Siak to make it a seven point game which she doesn't do. And Radicai will advance the basketball. Gives it up to Petrovic. It's a Sonia Petrovic and Milena Milovanovic show at the moment. And Radicai wants and gets. Eight on the possession. Oh, Dumont just takes it off her. And that's where Radicai has to be much more confident, much more aggressive. She's good. There's no help, as you've said on a number of occasions. Just penetrate and shoot. That was a great defense from Selene Dimerk because she got stuck a little bit in that um, screen, but she still had that effort to recover and use her hands to steal this ball. Radicai sits. Jovanovic is uh, guarding Johannes. Jovanovic has been anonymous offensively. And they're going to call a push in the post. And Tina Jovanovic picks up the personal. And line ball. 6.25 to go. Can Serbia pull this out the fire or that is set up a do or die game with Slovenia on the third day of qualifying? Mm. Great hands. Shutting Young just a little bit quick. You know, Vinovic wants the holding call, but I don't think she's going to get it. Seven on the possession. Celine Dumas. This is going up for three. Oh, Celine Dumas makes one. Makes three in a row, 11 points, personal for Celine Dumerk. France opening out to a nine point game. Petrovic tries to answer, backs it out. Gomanovic takes the long two, way short. 
And that's the Seven we know, you know, we remember. She's such a great shooter from the long distance. Well, they've got to call that, as they've been calling it all game. So, so yeah, Mandic picks up the personal. Celine Dumert has just picked up her game. She just takes that responsibility at the moment for the team as a five point guard, as a real legal leader of this game. Yeah, Miam sits down. Serbia take the timeout with 5.41 to go. They trail nine. And Celine Dumert. And she's had a different season. She changed clubs in preparation. She wasn't really scoring points. And it looked like that against Slovenia. But you always knew once she got herself going, she'd be back to her normal self. France with a 41 to 29 advantage on the glass. And you'd expect them to. No, not at all. But as you say, Selen is experienced, you know, and she's that type of player. She needs to hit that one three, you know, to be on the fire. Well, she's definitely got herself going now. She's opened this out to a nine point lead. So between Celine Dumerc and Johannes, the French have just opened it up. More expansive. Earlier shots, taking shots in transition. And it's not good position for um, the Serbian team at the moment, committing 15 foul already still with almost six minutes to go. We've seen this in the third quarter. And the French team's gonna go on that line. Well, back after the timeout. Celine Dumont milks the moment. Last person back out on the free throw line. <laughs> Makes the first. Back to a 10 point game, a double digit game. When does Serbia decide we, ain't get, we, we can't win this? We're going to have to take Sonja Petrovic out. Because France's score won't matter in any time. And we can see that full court man to man again from France team. Have to give them the space to recover. Ivanovic settles for the three, way off. Great work on the glass. Romanovic comes up with it, and it will be Serbia who retain possession. Puka's going to come back, Celine Dumerc's going to sit. Yeah. And Orbic is fouled, hand in the back. She'll go to the free throw line. And Serbia just hanging in just about enough. Makes the first, 17 personal. Two for two for the line, they just will not lie down. And that's what champions never do. France beat the press with the pass. And Sarah Michelle has it and Pupa gets it back. Two three zone by Serbia. Maybe the last throw to dice with the lineup on the floor at the moment. There's only Sarah Michelle who you'd want to trust with the open jump shot. Armand can't make it. And Mandic just about recovers it. Here's Sonja Petrovic. Stops and scores for Serbia. Nine point deficit. Petrovic takes the high post screen and feels the contact. That'll be France's fourth team foul. Almost feels like Sonia Petrovic plays point guard, she plays the wing, she plays almost the center as well, you know. Well, the, the Serbian sets, obviously with Anna Davovic in mind, Petrovic is more than capable. Gets the ball screen, gets a mismatch. Now they're going to clear. 
Petrovic, little hesitation, steps back, goes again, pulls up. Count. Oh. Just absolute quality. Even though Mon just now was way more aware of that three point shot, that just shows how Petrovic good is. Seven point margin. Kenyon catches it at the high post. And then Pupa. And this zone is uh, worrying France right at this moment. Sarah Michelle goes with a prayer off the glass. No good, gets her own rebound. And we've got a jump ball. Possession arrow goes to France. And Michelle shot, I think it did hit the, uh, did hit the ring. What a smart move from Serbian team to go to that zone when Selin Dimer is not on the court. There's in this lineup, as you mentioned earlier, it's only Michelle who would be probably able to hit that three, but there's no one really looking for that shot at the moment. Well, the only other option now is Mia me, me will just pop. If she pops, she's open, but you know, the scenario that they're faced with at the moment, is there enough time for this zone to take the offense away from France and enable Serbia to get back? A pooper, someone on this team in white has got to step up and take a shot. Mia feet set. And that's going to be Mia. Like it's a foot, it's a 12 footer, and no one from Serbia got a hand up. You're in the zone, you've still got to be active. Here's Levinovic. Petrovic looks inside, nice pass. We've got a holding foul, and we've got free throws. And France could be crazy enough here if they keep fouling that Serbia will potentially get back in this by making free throws. So, when in doubt, you bring back your player that has seen it all. What she hasn't seen is not worth seeing. Celine Dumert checks back in with 3.43 to go. It'll be interesting to see if Serbian team is going to stay in that zone right now with the presence of Celine Dumert on the court. Petrovic misses the first. Sorry, not Petrovic, obviously. Stankovic, uh, Jovanovic misses the first. Makes the second. Ticks it over. Eight point game. Dumert. Interesting to see what they do defensively right now. Liam will get it back and stay with the zone. Dumerk is just going to use time here and manage the clock. Dumerk. The worst thing they have is if Dumerk shot, they won't mind. That's why. Great big scene down the middle of the zone. And Dumerk just attacked it. 15 points for Celine Dumerk. Petrovic. Milovanovic wants the ball screen. Attacks it on the right hand, goes up off the glass, blows the layup. And France has time right now. They don't want to rush their offense. They want to use the time and prepare position. You can see that Serbia went back to man-to-man -man defense. Uh, there's a foul on the plate. Miramanovic picks up the personal. France will shoot two. Serbia take their final timeout. Well, it's a 10 point game with 2.51 to go. We said right at the beginning of the fourth, if it's not single digits, if they're not less than nine when it comes to the last five minutes, we didn't know if they had enough defense in them to get back in it with all the issues they have. And that unfortunately, is how it looks to me at the moment. Oh, 67 to 57. Serbia, the defending champions, are two minutes 50 away from going 0 and 2. They'll play Slovenia in, a, in, a, in obviously a local patriotic derby. Walking derby. Slovenia on the high after their first win. Both teams will have a day of rest. Slovenia already have the one win. Obviously, a lot could depend on the Greece result. But uh, Serbia will be in a situation where they might need other people to help them to progress to a one-off knockout game to make the quarterfinals. Sarah Michelle on the free throw line. Apart from the, apart from the period where they literally picked it up and ran and, and then 
Dumerc makes her threes. France still have not impressed, have they? No, not at all. As you said, you know, and that's exactly that 10 points difference at the moment, those three quick threes from Selene Dumerc. And also that brave layup into the zone for the middle of the paint. Petrovic, who gets to the middle, tries to go to the far side of the ring, runs the layup, can't complete. And Dumerc will bring. And she's just going to manage time now. The time's ticking in their favor, you know. Two minutes to go to the end of the game. They want to make sure that they extend the time as much as possible to not, to not give any more opportunities for Serbia at school. Time and possession. Dumerc with no time on the shot clock uh, just now for two. That calls a step up from this leader of the team. Ivanovic again not looking to score. Radicai gets it back to Jovanovic. It's almost an over-reliance on the pick. Armand blocks it. France not letting up. That's what all Serbia now plays. As you said, it's just a pick and roll and dive, you know. As you mentioned earlier, that France wasn't able to, to give that third, fourth pass in the offense. You don't see it at the moment from Serbia. It's just a pick and roll and, and playing that situation, that's all. Uh, Sonja Petrovic has sat down. Who knows how much damage she's done trying to get the win tonight. Jovanovic. And there's another 24-second violation. They just do not have offense. Individually, they cannot create without Davovic on the bench, with Petrovic being incapacitated less than 100%. Milanovic cannot create for it, the whole thing. France celebrate going 2-0. That's what it looks like at the moment. 1.30 to go. They lead it by 12. Humer. Who's feeling it? The short gets her own rebound, wraps the pass, just gives it to Jovanovic. Serbia three on two, or should have been three on two. Jovanovic goes off the glass, can't get it to drop. Dumerc finally gets back two on one, gives it up. Great step. Timing of the pass was perfect. One with a big step for the two. And France are enjoying a 14 point lead with a minute to go. Well, we knew this game would be a defining game for the group, but not quite in this way. No one saw Serbia coming in here with a loss to Greece. They're now going to approach, they're now going to have a whole day to think about, can we beat Slovenia to stay alive? That's a question because Slovenia is, today performed such well, you know. They are such impressive team, and I think Serbia should be worried beat them. And, you know, the, the, Mila Vanovic is the key because uh, they will have uh, all sorts of issues guarding Mila Vanovic like they did Kultidu. Again, the Serbian Achilles heel in this tournament with the lack of the inside quality with Lesic and, uh, and Persic could really undo them in that game against Slovenia. And the question is also how serious is the injury of Dabovic because this game just shows how important she is, how much the set offense is... is um, her offense, you know, they need her to take the part. And um, Radica is not able to really step up for her at the moment with the system as it works. Well, Celine Numa, with six seconds on the shot, steps back for three. Is long on that one. France get another offensive look. And now Celine Numa goes inside. I'm on with a reverse layup, can't get it to drop. And now they don't have to, well, they do have to shoot. It's like a second differential. They still want to shoot that ball. Mia That's makes it, it yeah. drops it. And that'll do it. Serbia, on the back of two defeats, will face elimination from this Eurobasket. Unless they get the win on Monday, France continue their march to the knockout stage with a 73 to 57 victory. Let's just say it was effective. France did what they had to do. The biggest story for them is Celine Dumerc got her offense going and had a big, big, big 17 point haul. 16 point win for France. Two point stats for Serbia to sum up the problem 27% from the field. Yeah, you can't win the game with 20% of shooting. But you know, I think loads of it's also like caused by the lack of offensive Serbia 
they all they played the second half was just five on five you know they waited for france to set up they didn't have that um bill to run fast break and just to play pick and roll for against a team like francis who can't succeed well petrovic's status on its team underlined by the fact that she led all scorers for uh, Serbia with Milevanovic, both of them with 18 apiece, no one else in double digits. And Petrovic is so far off being 100%. That's a courageous performance by a superstar of the game. Milevanovic tried to carry Serbia with her, but it just wasn't enough. And now Serbia, who had the high of a gold medal, the high of, a, of an Olympic Games, faced potential elimination. They will have to regroup. They will have to prepare and try and beat a Slovenian team that is on a high of their first ever Eurobasket women win. France, on the other hand, will face Greece, who may have to win to go through. So it's all to play for in the group. The format makes it very, very tough for it to, uh, to, to really rule out any combination of results and effects. But what's for sure is Serbia have got their backs to the wall. Exactly. As you've seen so far, you know, every game is such open opportunity for anyone who's taking part. You can't be sure in these two groups who's going to win those games. Um, that's a great advertisement as well for people coming back to watch Eurobasket Woman 2017 and come back after the day off tomorrow. Well, after the day, we definitely need a day off. We've had some great games today. Celine Dumerc with that three just down the line. She's back. And when Celine Dumerc is back, France are a medal prospect. Sonia Petrovic, you can't say enough great things about our courage. Dabovic is uh, just walking out the gym while you're looking at uh, the replays of this. Who knows how bad she is or how much she'll be able to play on Monday. But that's for Monday. Important now for France to regroup. Important for Serbia to get focused. But we'll have our day off. We'll be back here on Monday to see which teams will progress to the knockout stage. Hope you've enjoyed day two from Prague. For Theresa Brandt, Lover and Mark Clark, it's goodbye for now. Thank you.